from the Squamish Chief. This is the Squamish Sound. I'm Keely Bartlett. And I'm Stephen Chua. This is the 14th episode of our weekly podcast. You'll hear the story behind the story as we take you into the newsroom. We'll talk about what did and didn't get into the newspaper this week. On the show today, we're covering a farewell to the old wharf at the oceanfront, also known as Nexon Beach, and what's happening down at the spit. So, first of all, <laughs> we're going to be taking ourselves a trip down memory lane, mm-hmm. further down Loggers Lane until it turns into Galebraith Avenue, and then uh, actually taking a trip down memory lane. We're ready to go to the oceanfront. You've been right. And uh, as many of you guys probably have started noticing on your regular walks, Mm -hmm. those structures are getting dismantled. They're getting removed. And yes, they are a little bit old looking. They're not the prettiest anymore. But for a lot of people, it's the end of an era. What we ended up doing was piling up into a car and driving all the way down to get one last farewell at everything that was happening. Our mission is for me to see the derelict structures for the first time. Right. Yeah, I've been here for four months and I haven't checked them out yet. So oh, it actually took me like, for a, shame. It took me like a year to see them actually. All right, so I'm already yeah. ahead of the game. Yeah, you've already got <laughs> Why is it so important, Jen? I think for people, the old timers here especially, it is what's being lost more than just on the ocean front. It's the history and the logging past that we had and the industrial past. It's there. there it's nostalgic, I guess. So a quick backgrounder. Uh, this beach used to be called Nexon Beach, which is the name of the company that built a chemical plant in the area. wasn't always considered the ocean front or Newport as it is right now. And... Um, there's a really long and storied history about this and how it relates to Squamish's past, how each of those facilities kind of fit into the whole overall overarching story of how Squamish uh, came to be the town that it is now. And because it's such a, a, a complicated and long story, we decided we'd enlist a little bit of backup. So I called Councillor Eric Anderson, who is a widely known history buff here around town. Okay, east to west, we've got this salt ship docks. So when the chemical plant was in operation in 1965, they had a wharf built, mm-hmm. and it's the one in the Mamquam Blind Channel proper, oh, and it was okay. used for unloading salt. And the salt came from the Caribbean or Mexico, uh, I believe sometimes from California, uh, and uh, it was transported to the plant here for use in the sodium chlorate plant and um, in the, the the chemical plant. And so that those uh, that salt came by both very large ships and uh, by barge. So that's what the salt ship dock is, or the salt dock. The next one over is one that I have not identified, and I think it's a tie-up for, um, for tugs, uh, but it's part of the, the next structure, which is a rail barge facility. So the rail, the both the railway and the chemical plant shipped from Squamish by rail barge, and until 1956, everything was shipped by rail barge if it was freight commodity, and Squamish had a direct uh, shipping connection to Seattle for many many years. There were barges leading down to Seattle. So the rail barge dock is a structure with two towers. Nexon took over in the 1960s when that one was built. It replaced another rail barge dock in that same area that was constructed in 1929. Anderson talks about the 1929 dock next. The earlier rail barge dock that was decommissioned when the the train tracks were connected to North Vancouver, it was decommissioned in 1957. And it was built in 1929. Then the next one over is the long line of linear line of pilings, and that is the 1914 deep sea vessel dock. Uh, it was built for, for deep sea vessels, a rail barge facility, and passenger steamships in 1914. And uh, so those are the four structures. Anyways, back to our trip. There's our structures, Keely. Okay. <laughs> What's your first impression? I mean, yeah, they definitely seem like they're from a bygone era, right? Like, I don't know if I would have wanted to walk on them <laughs> you know just for safety reasons but they're they're kind of cool to see what it could have been like before 
Yeah. Uh, and it looks like the gate you can't pass through anymore. Uh, people do. There's people a wall. Yeah. Yeah. You never could. Okay. Well, well in, in recent past, you never could. People just go around. Let's go see what they're doing on this one because they're actually History. dismantling it now. Yeah. And they're removing lots of pilings as well, right? Yeah, so it was my first time seeing them. I actually hadn't thought to drive that far down Loggers Lane until it got to the ocean. Um, yeah, so I saw these for the first time, and it was pretty interesting to see what all the fuss was about. If I hadn't known the backstory, if I hadn't seen that everybody was pretty upset about these being taken down, I probably would have just wondered what they were even doing there. Um, yeah, it, they didn't... They were interesting to look at, but I wouldn't have been over the moon about them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, same thing with me. Like it, I'm st I'm also I, I've been here a little bit longer, but I'm also relatively new, so I haven't really grown up with these things around. But um, it it definitely is, uh, in a weird way. Well, I, I don't know, maybe not necessarily weird, but in its own way, it contributes to a sort of sense of place. Mm -hmm. Those things. Uh, have been there long before a lot of us have been even born. <laughs> and uh, I guess um, when something's just been around for that long, it's kind of upsetting to see it go yeah. away. Well, I think it stands for a lot more than what it physically is. I think to people, it reminds them of what Squamish was like when they moved here or what their family was like when they lived here together. It's kind of the end of the road for Squamish. That is physically where some of the roads end mm -hmm. and you can see very visually how the environment that people love and how the industry that supports people are in the same setting and how you know that industry that level of industry has changed a lot mm -hmm. and how Squamish has changed with it and yeah. I think it's hard for people to let go of that sometimes Going to the next thing, there's a lot happening yeah. at the Squamish Spit. <laughs> More on the waterfront. Absolutely. Um, Killy, what's happening? Yeah, so basically we've covered this story several times in the newspaper uh, because people have been a little confused about what exactly is happening at the Spit. People who recreate there with different kind of wind sports have been concerned about the temporary closures that are going to be happening this summer, I think through June. And when they were starting, people were worried about what was happening. Does this mean people will never be able to access this bit again? Of course, these are temporary closures. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things was that people were kind of questioning why they needed it needed to be closed at all. And so their latest story that we have in the newspaper this week is some fast facts from the societies that are organizing this closure and just why it needs to be done. All right, now we're going to our editor's pick, where our editor, Jennifer Thuncher, comes in and tells us about what she thinks is the issue of the week. Jen, you, you what's sounded, happening? You sounded confused. Oh! <laughs> okay. okay. No, 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 my issue. Okay. Just keep going. Okay. Uh, okay, so this week we found out that a local institution, Gem Jewelers, is closing its doors. Oh, man. Why, <laughs> why I might ask. But I tried to pause once again for dramatic effect. You know how it goes, Jen. Okay. Um, well, first we should say that a business closing is not usually news, right? Mm, Business right. is open and they close and that's not necessarily news. But Gem Jewelers has been around in the corridor since 1967, mm. family-run business. And they have been um, in Squamish in their location for 23 years. So that's a long time. And I'm going to be talking to them Monday for a story next week about sort of what's actually going on in their lives that's causing this. So I don't want to give too much away. But yeah. what I thought we could do now is maybe do a call out to our readers and listeners. Mm -hmm. um, their memories sort of of um, gem jewelers over the years. Because it is the place where people in Squamish went to get their engagement rings or their wedding rings after that and then things for their kids grandkids husbands wives all that hmm. children um so 
Yeah, I mean, this is really the the sentimentality episode. We got the, yeah, we've got the we got the episode. trip down to the oceanfront, seeing old structures, and now we got ourselves um, an institution just. Kind yeah. of closing his doors. Closing his doors. So if we could get our listeners and readers to send in their memories, that would be awesome. So to news at squamishchief.com and tell us what you remember and we will publish it in the paper next week. Thank you so much, Jen. Bye. Whoop, 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 whoop. Wait, we forgot something. First, before we finish up, we're going to get our office dog's pick of the week. We're going to bring in Napoleon, our lovely office dog, to get his perspective on what he thinks is the most important issue of the week. Napoleon, (laughs) what do you think of the old wharf closing? (laughs) The Squamish Sound is brought to you by the Squamish Chief. The music for this episode was produced by Stephen Chua, cover photo by Clayton Matthews. Have a story tip? Give us a call at 604-892-9161. Send an email to news at squamishchief.com. You can read these stories and more online at squamishchief.com or subscribe to the newspaper and have the news delivered to your door every week.